Hey, incoming freshmen, look over here. Welcome to college. It's your first year, and you're probably trying to figure out how to schedule all those classes you're taking. I, I mean, seriously, it can be a bit overwhelming. It's a tough business having to navigate from your intro to English composition course on the north side of campus to your survey of women's erotica class, which, believe me, is actually not as interesting as you would think. And that, of course, is over there in the old basement of the gymnasium. You only got a few minutes in between class, and let's face it, 10 minutes really isn't enough time for you to walk over there, get a latte, spend a few minutes centering in on your chi, maybe kick around the little hacky sack a bit before embarking on another academic endeavor. But I have some ideas that might help make this whole college thing a little less academic and a lot more fun for you. Oh, and you'll get credit and you contribute to expanding the human mind all at the same time. I'm talking, of course, about government-funded research. <laughs> Government-funded research? That's a great way to get around doing real work while you're at college. That's right. The government gives a lot of money to professors to study lots of different things. In fact, the National Institute of Health, we'll call that the NIH, is the largest public funder of biomedical research in the world. And its mission is to enhance health, lengthen life, and reduce illness and disability. Those aren't bad things, aren't they? Of course, their way of defining those things probably a little bit different than the way we define those things in the real world. And uh, funny thing about that, they have funded some studies that might make this whole college experience just a little more interesting for you. Let me ask you a question. Are you concerned that your social life might be lacking now that you are only a tiny minnow in a big sea of college students? You want to get laid, you want to party, you want to have a good time, but there's just one problem. As a first day college freshman with half an acne farm on your face, maybe nobody wants to do those things with you. Well, good news, you should sign up to help with the latest $3 million study on electronic dance music. Yeah, EDM. You know, that stuff ravers listen to. Yeah, dubstep, woo! Well, it turns out the NIH, you know, the National Institute of Health, they're doling out large chunks of cash to study things like excessive alcohol use, drug use, physical and or sexual aggression, and other unsafe behaviors upon exiting from nightclubs that feature electronic dance music. Rave parties. You see, this is going to shock you, but the government seems to think that large groups of young people are rolling around on the dance floor at rave parties, doing all kinds of drugs and engaging in the kind of things that you don't only find at rave parties, but basically everywhere else that young people go to have fun as well. Pretty typical, right? Well, the goal behind the study is to develop a nanny app that can intervene before things get out of hand. So the government's spending $3 million to develop a software application that can warn you when you're partying too hard. Gosh, does that sound like money well spent. Thanks, government. Yep. The feds want to know if going to a club where there's electronic dance music being played encourages risky behavior. They heard that Calvin Harris is dropping tunes down at the music festival this weekend, and they're willing to spend $3 million to find out what happens at said experience. So enterprising little college freshmen such as yourself, get your fake ID ready, because you're about to go party, and the government's going to pay for it. Now, if you want to bring a little something extra to that EDM club, you might want to work with another group that's doing a study on the effects that cocaine have on Japanese quail. Japanese quail? Isn't that a bird? Yes, it is, imaginary person who's not really in the room. In fact, the National Institute of Health, the NIH, has already spent over $350,000 to determine if quail on blow become more sexually promiscuous. Does cocaine make Japanese quail want to hump like rabbits? Or like Japanese quail, so to speak? Hmm, imagine that. Giving quail cocaine possibly causes them to behave just like humans on cocaine. Does that mean that they also chain smoke and tell you stories that have no ending while they hang out outside of a nightclub listening to a bad Motley Crue tribute band? 
Well, if you're interested in studying and possibly borrowing some of that cocaine from said Japanese quail, well, it turns out that mean old Senator Rand Paul has some choice words about this. You know that woolly lamb-haired guy whose dad is Ron Paul? Well, he says, common sense would have told us that cocaine is probably not good for you and that cocaine might make you do things that you wouldn't have done otherwise if you hadn't have been on cocaine. So how about that? There's a lot of opportunity for enterprising freshmen such as yourself to improve your chances of meeting people, having fun, possibly getting laid, and even using drugs, and the federal government's going to help you do it. But if electronic dance music and birds on cocaine aren't your thing, and you're looking for a short-term study, then the NIH might have just the thing for you. They're looking for people to examine the music volume at bars along the U.S.-Mexico border. You know that imaginary line that runs between America and Mexico, where people keep getting kidnapped, and coyotes working for cartel gunmen sneak children over and then pretend that those are their kids? You know, so they could get him into the country? That U.S.-Mexico border. The study has a great name, too. It rolls right off the tongue. It's called Mexican-American Drinking Contexts On and Away from the U.S.-Mexico Border. Genius. Who comes up with this stuff? I guess it involves government-funded researchers going into bars for unobtrusive systemic observations. And one of the aims is to examine whether the bars in these border towns have more dancing and louder music. Wow, what a fantastic thing for us to piss away government money on. Imagine that. Bars in border towns like Tijuana and Laredo might play loud music to encourage people to drink more. Kind of like they do at literally every other bar in America. I guess they're trying to figure out if loud music and alcohol causes people to do things like fight or engage in sexually aggressive behavior. And that might result in drinking too much tequila, which is a shocking news story to everybody on earth who's never had tequila before. Sounds great, huh? And the government actually pays your professors to do these ridiculous things. It's the kind of stuff you would be doing at spring break, but you could be doing while you're at school if you just knew how to get a little do-re-mi from the federal government. The choice is yours, but make sure you make the right decision, young millennial voters, because you don't want to worry your parents too much. After all, they might not send you back to college next year. 